I think that we are not extracting all the useful information out of the data that we acquire. In other words, we're mining for gold. We want to extract as much gold from the ore as we possibly can. Now, we, the reason we didn't do that is because we didn't have the capacity to analyze the data. So I think today we will be able to look at data and recycle it the same way we recycle a bottle of, of plastic or, or an aluminum bottle. It's a complicated question. I, I'm so reluctant to say yes. AI is man's greatest invention. Because it has the ability to functionally think, it, it occupies the space that we've traditionally applied to humanity. So all of man's other inventions, whether it be fire, or, or cars, or even technology in general, has expanded man's domain. For, for example, a bicycle. Great idea, it made us move faster, faster than we possibly could. So there was a mechanical advantage. This is the first time in human history that we're seeing a cognitive advantage to this degree. So I would argue that it's probably man's most interesting invention. Is it man's greatest invention? I'm gonna hold off and wait on that. I think that the physician in today's world is obsolete because their cognitive capacity is inconsistent with the amount of data that's coming to them. If you think about the amount of data, genomic analysis, clinical trials, things that, that they really haven't studied in medical school, it's a bit like being a doctor and drinking out of a fire hose. Now, contrast to that, the physician's number one complaint, I don't have enough time with my patients. So if we can allow artificial intelligence to play a role in many aspects of the clinical decision process, from history and physical, track the words, what did I say, how frequently did I say it, is there an undulation in my voice that might be consistent with Parkinson's disease or even coronary artery disease, these are fundamental advances that allow physicians to do one thing, and one thing that is so human and so important, and that's engage with the patients. For me, innovation is a strategic process. We use the word innovation and disrupt and all sorts of sort of trendy phrases, but we really can't apply them to practical aspects of running a business or, or, or driving product development. For example, if I told my company we need to be 20% more innovative, what does that mean? Does my copy machine have to be 20% faster? No, it's the judicious application of innovation and insights to the process at key points. And it's, it's finding those key points, it's developing a strategic path or a street strategic process that'll help bring innovation to life in a way that is, is more functionally appropriate and also more economical. For me, I believe that facts are friendly. So we can look at what AI is doing now, how powerful it's becoming, and we could hypothesize. Will it change the clinical modalities such that clinicians might be, well, either replaced or evolved to a, move, to a new and, and much more important role? I think the fundamental question is not whether AI will replace the physician, but will AI replace us? So I've, I've recently taken on a new project. I'm writing a book. It's probably one of the biggest endeavors I've done in a long time. But I'm trying to analyze what the implications are of technology to humanity. And I'm not trying to do it in a contemporary sense. I'm going back to the ancient Greek philosophers at Aristotle and looking at the four fundamental pillars of human experience. Truth, beauty, morality, and unity. And I'm looking at how those sort of touch points of the human condition are being evolved and changed by technology.